Hey, what's up, guys? Oh, life is difficult. Okay, so uh, welcome to my analytic, analytic number theory lecture. And uh, so today, uh, uh, previously, I, I think I introduced two functions, right? One is order five function. One is this, uh, one is order five function. One is this famous uh, uh, Mobius function. So today, uh, let's introduce another two. And uh, then we are going to talking about the direction of products and uh, you can finish this elementary introduction. Okay, so this function is a uh, uh, mangled function. So this function is really, really famous. Uh, probably you don't know, but uh, related to the Riemann hypothesis. So I have a serious video about Riemann hypothesis, but uh, use the Mandarin version. So uh, I will create English version in the future. But basically, this uh, theta n defined to be uh, if n is prime power, then it gives you log p, else it gives you zero. Okay. And uh, the famous result that if you take the zeta function uh, derivative on s, then you can prove, I think it's this one. Okay, so this is a really, really deep conjecture. Uh, this is a really deep theorem. So then the, you can use the Perron's formula. So once you know the roots of the Riemann zeta function, then it will give you the the order of the prime uh prime number uh prime distribution so uh this is so very very related to the Riemann conjecture uh, Riemann hypothesis and also uh, prime number theory okay so actually you can start from here to prove the prime number theory and the results will be very simple if you start from these directions okay but the, the whole proof maybe need to take like uh, two hours and uh, step by step because it uh, depends on how much you understand the Riemann zeta function. If you already understand what is analytic continuation, then it will be very simple that you just apply a parallel formula on both sides and you get answer. Okay, so uh, but I, I only want to prove one uh, important properties that I will prove in a, I will use in a zeta function. Okay, so theorem. Uh, I think if you take the uh, D where D belongs to N, it will give you uh, log N. Okay, so you can try, let's maybe try, uh, I don't know, maybe let's say six. Okay, so, uh, right, so you can take, so six has, so basically you have one, two, three, six, right? So one is, uh, so by definition, one is defined to be one. Oh, sorry, one is defined to be zero. So uh, I didn't write it, but, uh, Right, so one is not prime power, right? So it's zero, and then this is log two plus log three, right? And that is zero. <laughs> so it's exactly log six. Okay. Uh so let's give it a proof. Okay, so n equals to one is trivial. Okay. And then we know that we, we want to compute this, right? So which we got is so this is what just what? This is just the log p, right? For uh for any uh, so you take any prime factors of p, right? Sorry, of n, right? So you take n to be uh, p to the m. Okay. Then, uh, then it's very trivial to prove that this is just log. Okay. So reason uh, maybe a little bit hard to see. Uh, let's see. Okay. So let's let's maybe write this as p one m one, p two m two. Let's say p k m k. Okay. So uh, the only prime factor that corresponding to D will give you, uh, let's say, you just say take log N. So you get M1 log P1, M2 log B2, MK log BK. Then, uh, then the only thing contributes to uh, this function is the prime power, right? So uh, I only need to do, let's say, I only need to compute log, let's say, p1 to the uh, s right summation from s to uh 1 to m1 right so so not long right this right? but this is just s p s right because this is log p uh this is just uh each term is the same it gives you log p1 right so this is just s from 1 to m log p1 so this is m1 right so you get m1 log p1 so if you consider the p1 powers contribution, it gives you m1 log p1, and for uh, 1 to k, it gives you everything, right? So that's it, okay. Okay, so next I want to introduce, let me just talk about this. This is divisor and uh, the sum of divisor function. 
I think this is also a famous one, right? So the tau of n divided to be the summation d, which is all the factor which divides n, which is one, right? So for example, tau of six is four. Okay, and then you can, because this is one, two, three, six, and then you can easily say that power of P1, M1, PK, MK, it's just a, uh, right, your elementary school, high school, uh, your elementary school teacher uh, should prove this for you. <laughs> now you take each power because each, each uh, factor you can choose from zero to M1, right? So there are M1 plus one of them and total have this one, okay? And uh, so from here, you can easily, you can prove the famous result that tau of n is uh, less, a uh, very, very less than n plus uh, small o one. So basically this means that uh, for any epsilon, I just say epsilon, right? So for any epsilon greater than zero, there is x, x zero greater than zero when uh, x minus greater than x zero is tau of x, uh, well, less than, uh, strictly less than uh, x to the epsilon, okay? you can try to prove this, right? This is the bound for the divisor function. So divisor function can be arbitrarily small. So um, in a, a computer science language or analytic number theory, I use O of one. So this O is not big O, it's small O. Okay, small O one. Okay, and uh, yeah, so famous uh, or is tau of P to M, it will be M plus one. Okay, then the other is a sigma. So sigma N divided by summation D, D divides n, right? So for example, sigma six is one plus three plus six, which is I think third, twelve. Okay, and you can easily check the tau of p of m. This is sum of divisor function divided to be one plus p, right? So p to m has a divisor, uh, one p, p square up to p to m. Right? So this is a ge uh, geometric uh, series. So it's p m one plus one minus one minus one. Okay. And uh, let me just introduce the idea. Oh, by the way, and uh, how to bound, how to bound sigma n in general, how, how to bound sigma n in general, right? This is deep, right? Because it's not like this one I get. I, I mean, you, you, get, you can compute, you can get a results of looks that look like this, right? But uh, there is a conjecture that also uh, related to Riemann hypothesis that you can bound this sigma n in terms, in terms of some strange uh, results. Okay, so bound list guy is also interesting. Okay, so let's talk about perfect numbers. Okay, so the perfect number is uh, also interesting. It's defined to be uh, it's defined to be a number. So a number is called a perfect number. It's called a perfect number. If uh, sigma n is two to n. Okay, so basically, except for n, then each prime each prime fact uh, each divisor sum is the same as uh, itself, right? So the example is that uh, sigma uh, six is 12, right? So because six plus six. Okay, and then you can check that. I think it's 28 is this. So it's not very, diff it's very difficult to find uh, this such kind of things. Okay, and the uh, open question, uh, is there a perfect number? Is there an odd perfect number? I think up now there is no odd perfect number uh, haven't been found. So this is a weird, weird thing. Okay. Okay, so Euler, Euler give us a interesting theorem about the uh, perfect numbers. Okay, and uh, so theorem says that uh, even an uh, even perfect number, uh, it's already classified if and only if, n is uh, 2 to the p1 times 2p minus 1, uh, where, p, where p is prime, and, uh, two to, and uh, 2 to the p minus 1 is also prime. Okay, so let's take an example. Uh, how to do this? Let's say p to the 2, right? p to the 2, p is cool. So n is uh, 2 to the 1 times 2 to the square minus 1, so it should be 6. Right, and then this is three, this is two, right? So fact, uh, satisfy this relationship. And then how about, uh, let's say P is a three. So let's check. So N can be two to the square, two to the three minus one. So it's prime, right? So it's seven. So four times seven is 28. Okay. So this guy, uh, this theorem characterizes the even 
perfect numbers. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, I don't want to prove this, but okay. So then maybe then let me just prove one direction. I, I remember another direction is hard, a little bit difficult. So let's maybe prove these directions and try try to prove. Okay. So uh, let's say these directions should be simple. Okay, so let's consider n is already looking like this, and then this guy is prime, and then this guy is prime. Okay, I want to compute sigma n. Right, how to compute this? So, oh, by the way, I didn't say this. So sigma n is a uh, uh, multiplicative. So two to the p minus one comprised to two to the p minus one uh, minus one, right? Because this guy has no right, so you get sigma uh, two to the p minus one. Sigma two p minus one, right? And then this guy is prime. Right, so for prime number, I just got one plus p, so I get one plus two to the p, and for this guy, uh, I get I get what? I get the right. So sigma two to the k will be one plus two plus two to the k, two to the k plus one minus one, right? So this guy should be uh two to the p minus one. Uh, oh, sorry, so sorry. Uh, this prime, right? So I should add. I should only add one. Right, so we got this. Right, so we got this because this is just add one, right? Add one, so we got two to the p. So this is a uh, two to the two to the p minus one times two to the p minus one, right? So two n. Okay, and uh, these directions, I I remember the proof is a little bit difficult, so uh, I neglect, right? But uh, but you can try to prove this because. Uh, let's say so even number right so you can take the even number to be two to the k times some odd let's say this is odd number and then you try to compute sigma n okay so you get sigma n i think should be uh i think should be let's say i think it should be two to the uh do the same thing two to the k plus one minus one and the sigma p odd right and then you want this guy to be two to the k plus one p r right so you got this, but this is impossible unless that PR divides this, right? Because these two terms are comprised to each other, right? So, oh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, so unless this guy has some relationship with this guy and this guy has some relationship with, 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 uh, with this guy, right? So simple relation, simple idea uh, relation is that P of R can be this and the sigma of P of R should be, P of R should be this guy, right? But, uh, but if this is the case, then sigma p of r, uh, hopefully can be prime, right? Just mitigate these terms, right? And the uh, right, and uh, this guy must be uh, these terms, right? So this p of r must be these terms, which prove that the sigma p of r must be uh, uh, this kind of forms. And uh, yeah, you can try to prove this. I think up to now it's very close. Okay. So uh, that's it. So next time, uh, let me just, I want to talk about the Dirichlet products. The Dirichlet products in number theory. Okay, so see you guys uh, next video.